and welcome back to Mysteries Channel. Today I wanted to talk about elongated heads that have been found all over the world. And when I say all over the world, I truly mean all over the entire world. They've been found in the Middle East, Southwest Asia among Neolithic people, Europe, Africa, South America, North America, Russia, China, Australia, anywhere people have lived at some point in history, there has been a culture of elongating heads. Some of the most famous or notable elongated heads that are out there are the Paracas skulls found near the south coast of Peru. And there were some found in medieval burial sites in Bavaria, the Alan skull of Iran, skulls from Croatia, many North American tribes practiced artificial cranial deformation, and many, of course, in South America as well. These skulls that have been found have spanned the ages. The earliest known instance of this practice occurred around 12,000 years ago in ancient China, according to scholars. It is unclear if this practice spread from there or if it emerged independently all over the world. This is not some ancient fad, and no one really knows when it started, where it started, or why it started. Intentional cranial deformation predates written history, in fact. It was practiced commonly in a number of cultures that were widely separated geographically and chronologically, and it still occurs in places today. It has been considered possible that the practice of cranial deformation originates from an attempt to emulate those groups of the population in which elongated head shape was a natural condition. The skulls of some ancient Egyptians are among those identified as often being elongated naturally and may be a familial characteristic. Artificial cranial deformation or modification, head flattening, or head binding is a form of body alteration in which the skull of a human being is deformed intentionally. It is done by distorting the normal growth of a child's skull by applying force. Flat shapes, elongated ones, produced by binding the head between two pieces of wood. Rounded ones have been produced as well. And conical ones are among those chosen or valued in various cultures around the world. Typically, the shape alteration is carried out on an infant as the, the skull is more pliable at this time. In a typical case, head binding begins approximately one month after birth and then continues for another six months. Something that must be noted here is that there have been in utero fetuses found inside of ancient mummies where the babies, the fetus, has already had a, an elongated skull. So obviously, this is naturally occurring in some cultures or was naturally occurring in some cultures. An interesting thing to also point out here is that many scholars believe that this was practiced as a visual indicator of association with a certain cultural group for beautification practices or to denote social status. And it's more than just head binding. There are many, many instances, especially in the past, where conical hats or headpieces have been displayed you can find them in paintings of religious people of renown, royal families, rulers of the world, especially in ancient times, even witches and wizards and those types of people. Anyone, it seems to me, it was reserved for people mm, that had knowledge. I'm just going to say that. I don't know how else to put it, but I assume that many people practice this because they looked at the people that maybe naturally had that head shape as being more intelligent. So I personally have a theory on this and I will get to it, but first let's talk about hominids that once walked with us. Neanderthal walked among us 40,000 years ago across Asia and Europe. Their appearance was similar to us in the fact that they were bipedal hominids. They had large noses, strong double arched brows, and relatively short stocky bodies. Neanderthals are depicted as being primitive, stupid, and brutish for much of the early 20th century, though their image in the scientific community has markedly changed since then. The unevolved caveman archetype remains prevalent in most pop culture. We've all seen the caveman ads, right? <laughs> Geico. Neanderthal technology is thought to have been somewhat sophisticated, though. It includes stone tools, the ability to create fire and build cave hearths, making adhesive birch bark tar, crafting simple clothes similar to blankets and ponchos, seafaring through the Mediterranean, 
making use of medicinal plants and various cooking techniques such as roasting and smoking. They were likely apex predators and competed with cave bears, cave lions, cave hyenas, and other large predators. Several examples of upper Paleolithic art have been controversially attributed to Neanderthals. Most famously, the Spanish cave paintings contentiously dated before 65,000 years ago. And some claim of religious beliefs have been made as well. They were capable of speech, though it is unclear how complex their language would have been. I mean, dang, when you hear this stuff about Neanderthals, they don't sound that different from us. I mean, seriously, from human beings at the same point in time, are they below us? Now we also know of Denisovan. Denisovans were discovered in a site called the Denisova Cave in Siberia, close to Russia's border with China and Mongolia. They are a mysterious species of hominins from the Homo genus who are genetically different from both Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, but related to us through an extinct yet undiscovered ancestor. We know that Denisovans migrated out of Africa sometime after the first wave of Homo erectus well before us. Denisovans are unique in many ways having branched away from other humanoid ancestors some one million years ago. Indeed, the recent discovery of a female Denisovan finger bone with various teeth shows that they had no morphological similarities to either Neanderthals or us. However, they did walk among us on this rock we call Earth. They coexisted with us and Neanderthals for a period. And skeletal remains and genetic studies confirm that they also mated with our forebearers and Neanderthals. In fact, it is estimated that humans in certain parts of the world share between 3 and 5% of Denisovan DNA. Oddly enough, even though Denisovans a new discovery to the Homo gene, they are actually older and far more divergent to us than Neanderthal. And even though we've just barely found them, they left the scene after Neanderthal, possibly even interbreeding with modern humans only 15,000 years ago near Papua New Guinea. Only 15,000 years ago. That's, shit, that's yesterday, people. What did they look like? It's hard to say because they've only just found small pieces of them. And what we know comes from skeletal fragments and DNA analysis. Skeletal remains show that Denisovans were probably far more robust and powerful than modern humans and were, until now, assumed to be a more primitive, archaic type of humans. It just goes to show, like we did with Neanderthal, we do with Denisovans and probably any other species that we come across in the ancient past. We immediately identify them as a lower species, a caveman dummy who couldn't survive our superior intelligence in warrior ways. And then, this evidence smacks us right in the damn face. A 40,000 year old bracelet was found in that very cave I mentioned earlier, the Denisova cave in Russia. Amazingly, the skill involved in making this adornment shows a level of technique at least 30,000 years ahead of us at this point in, our, in time. This bracelet was so far superior than what us humans or our cousins, the Neanderthals, were pulling off that, in fact, Dr. Derevyanko was quoted as saying, What is incredible is that the craftsman who made this adornment seems to have used something similar to a modern drill. What? Yeah, that's right. It is so advanced. It looks like a modern drill was used to make it. Alrighty, people, remember that theory I talked about earlier? My theory is that people from around the world, through time and place, practiced artificial cranial deformation or modification, not merely because they thought it was beautiful or for social placement in society, but because they revered a race of people that perhaps physically displayed this trait. My guess is that it was maybe the Denisovans. Maybe it was another race, the race that predates them. But people saw that those from the other race had conical heads and were mentally superior than us. We emulated them, wanting to be as intelligent, trying to change our appearance to look more like them, hoping that the physical change that we were making to our bodies would spill over into our brains, increasing our brain power. Now, we have ancient structures all over the world, and we have this strange jump in our civilization where it's almost like we hit this level of achievement and then we take steps down. We de-evolve. What if a great many of these ancient buildings that we are finding were leftovers from just prior to the Younger Dryas period? We have all these ancient structures all over the world, right? 
We like to say that we know for a fact around when it was made, but I think that we're way off on that. I think there was an ancient civilization of people that were not quite us. And many of the things that we're finding today were originally started by them. Eventually we found them and maybe we upkept them or we added to them or we embellished them a little bit differently, but they began with possibly Denisovans, maybe even somebody else. And then what happens? The Younger Dryas period. Just think about it. Just prior to the Younger Dryas period, we know that in the very least, there was us and there was Denisovans. And I just want to say that I, I'm willing to bet that there were even still Neanderthals around. And then something happens, a huge cataclysm happens, and well, there wasn't much of anything left after that, right? Except for huge stone monuments all over the world that we're going to rediscover later and just think, wow, what did we used to do? I can't believe all the stuff that we were once able to accomplish because, you know, we're at the very top. So tell me what you think. Is this a crazy theory? Is it crazy to think that all these different people from around the world practiced head modification to elongate their heads, hoping that they would gain some knowledge, some knowledge that was left behind by an ancient race that naturally had elongated heads? I don't know, let me know what you think. Please, if you liked what you watch, subscribe, leave a comment. I want to thank you for supporting me and watching my content and um, you have yourself a super great day.